This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 663. Four things relationships must have to be successful, and stop believing the lie that you should be further along by now. Both by Elon and Guy Ferdman of mindbender.co. Hello, everybody, and happy midweek. I am Greg Audino, and welcome to the show. I am here every weekday to narrate some of the best relationship blogs we can find for you, and today I will be narrating two posts by the Ferdman Brothers. You'll learn practical tips for your relationship, and the second post talks about your self-concept of success. Well, sounds like valuable info to me, so let's learn more from Elon and Guy and start optimizing your life. Four Things Relationships Must Have to Be Successful by Elon and Guy Ferdman of mindbender.co. If you hold the popular belief that relationships are hard work and you'd like to maintain that belief, then please don't continue to read because implementing the suggestions in this article will likely make your relationships more loving, easy, fun, and empowered without adding any hard work. It doesn't matter if you're single and dating or been married for years. Romantic relationships must have a few things to be successful. Number one, communicate without conditions. Communicating doesn't just mean texting or talking. Are you truly hearing what your partner is saying, or instead, are you hearing the translation of what you believe they're saying? Are you undeniably clear when speaking to your partner? Excellent communication entails being able to share your real sentiments and the other party, knowing and understanding what you're sharing, responds honestly, and vice versa. If you have expectations on how you want your partner to react or respond to what you're saying, then you're most likely setting yourself up for failure. They get to have their own reaction independent of your expectations. If you can come to terms with that and be open to hearing them out without judgment, you're creating an environment that allows them to feel safe with speaking their truth. Number two, be your true self. Do not be shy to admit that you like weird stuff or that what other people find lame are awesome to you. Don't try to put on a cool guy mask when you're dorky deep inside. Don't try to be all macho when you're actually a marshmallow. The person that you are is unique and perfect as you are. Not being able to be your real self in a relationship can be exhausting, disappointing, and isn't sustainable for the long term anyway. Being loved and appreciated for who you really are and all your truth is essential for showing up as your best self for your significant other. If being your true self is unappealing to your partner, you're probably with the wrong person. Number three, take full responsibility for outcomes. This one may be a hard one to swallow. If someone in the relationship makes a mistake, within reason, does something to upset you, or says something that can lead to an argument, consider taking full responsibility for it regardless of who is at fault. Why on earth would we tell you to do this? There are a few reasons. For starters, this tends to put you in a position of being able to find a solution without the other person getting defensive, feeling unappreciated, or feeling judged. It also reinforces your choice of loving unconditionally, no matter how the other person shows up. If your partner makes a mistake, rubbing it in their face will only make them more bitter towards you and encourages them to do the same when you mess up. You're both bound to make mistakes along the way. Successful relationships are a safe place where you can be wrong, accepted, and forgiven rather than blamed, judged, or ridiculed. Number four, be grateful. Notice the small things, even if you feel like it's their duty to do them. Express your appreciation often. Let your partner know you're grateful for their love, support, and anything specific they've done that contributes to making your relationship be more fulfilled. Not only does this encourage them to continue to show up this way, but it also trains your mind to focus on more things you love about your partner. Making these four components a norm in your relationship will inevitably create more happiness, connection, and love with your significant other. And speaking of relationships, maybe there is a relationship problem that's been bugging you for some time. If so, guidance and expertise from a trusted professional can give you fresh solutions to your most pressing issues. That's why I want to talk to you really quick before we get to our second article about BetterHelp Online Counseling, which offers you a safe and private online setting to seek help. BetterHelp's licensed counselors specialize in areas like relationships, family conflicts, anxiety, and more. You can schedule sessions at your own time and pace. 
And if you don't like communicating with your counselor through video, you can even choose to communicate through text, chat, or phone, whichever you're most comfortable with. And you can even request a new counselor at no additional charge if you're unhappy. BetterHelp is available worldwide with a network of 3,000 U.S. licensed therapists. No lengthy schedule processes here, as you can start communicating with your therapist in less than 24 hours. You may even qualify for financial aid. And best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Optimal Relationships Daily listeners get 10% off their first month with discount code ORD. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash ORD. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash ORD. Stop believing the lie that you should be further along by now. Also by Elon and Guy Ferdman of mindbender.co. You are exactly where you need to be right now. Whether you feel you are in the best or in the worst part of your life is irrelevant. You are exactly where you need to be in this moment in your life. When you open Facebook, are you greeted by photos of a friend showing off his new ride? Do you find yourself asking, how is he able to afford that when I can't even afford to get a massage? Do you see airport selfies of a friend with the caption, hashtag Eurotrip? And you're thinking, wasn't she just in the Caribbean? While you're browsing Facebook with nothing to post, do you sometimes wish you were somewhere nicer or doing something cooler with your life? Before you go into your private pity party, think for a second. Is this how they actually live their lives 24-7? My guess is no. Generally, people only post stuff on social media when things are great. In the same way that you haven't posted about how sorry you feel for yourself, other people don't normally do that too. These people probably struggled some before they achieved their successes. We don't know how long they've saved or what they've sacrificed to reach their goals. We only know what they've achieved, but not how they managed to do it. For all we know, they could have gone through situations tougher than yours. So before you compare others' successes to your lack of, remember that behind the story you are seeing is probably a long history of late hours in the office, cost-cutting, stuff getting sold. Don't pressure yourself by thinking you should be doing better than you currently are. There's no deadline on success. Vera Wang did not become a designer until she was 41. Samuel L. Jackson did not get his big break until he starred in Pulp Fiction alongside John Travolta. He was 46 years old. Ray Kroc was 59 when he bought his first McDonald's. So how is it that you are exactly where you are supposed to be? Think of it this way. Maybe you're in the struggle before the success stage. Maybe you're at the brink of your big break. The thing is, all our successes, even the smallest ones, a high grade, a sale, an accomplished to-do list, won't have happened if we were not where we were supposed to be then. So in that same way, we need to be where we are right now to learn what we need for that future success, to equip ourselves with the experience we need to grow into that future moment, to surpass the present trying times that's going to make the future success sweeter. Many best-selling authors have probably gone through a writer's block at least once before they sold a book. Many famous actors have probably played an embarrassing role at one point in their careers. Even the greatest athletes have missed crucial shots. But these moments did not destroy them. For some, these moments have made them even bigger than they first were. So don't worry if you're not where you want to be at this exact moment in your life. Just trust that you are where you are supposed to be for when you become your own success. Maybe then you'll get to post something on social media. You just listened to the posts titled Four Things Relationships Must Have to Be Successful and Stop Believing the Lie That You Should Be Further Along by Now, both by Elon and Guy Ferdman of mindbender.co. And a big thanks to the boys, as usual, for their insights. It's funny, I think these two articles actually parallel one another. Because many times, we feel as though we should be in a certain place in our relationships, uh, specifically. We feel pressured to have accomplished certain things with our partner or uh, to be on a certain wavelength with them. But it's only through trust and acceptance in where we are at currently that we're able to start considering how to improve, like through the steps that the Ferdmans listed in their first article. It's never a waste of time to accept where you're at, and it certainly does not mean that you can't change it. So thanks for coming by, everybody. Make sure to spend some time letting it sink in so that you can go about making the positive changes in your life that you need to. 
I will see you again tomorrow with a post on highly sensitive kids where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.